Hi guys, this is Ashish from Edureka and today I'll be talking about the changes and new features of Angular 5. Now the main focus behind the changes in Angular 5 is to make the very framework smaller by reducing the bundle size faster that is bringing more responsiveness and easier that is including new new features for a developer to work on. Now most of these changes has happened under the hood and you won't notice much of a difference if you go ahead with the Angular 5 as of now. But there are some changes which you can leverage in your current code base with Angular 5 so as to improve your code performance. So guys, let's go ahead and have a look at all those changes. So we'll start with Progressive Web Application Support. As you know, Google has been working on Progressive Web Application for quite a long time. The idea of PWA is very much insane and I believe will put a huge impact on the way things work around in a web development industry. Basically, a progressive web application is a web application that can be installed on your system. It works offline when you don't have an internet connection, leveraging the data cache during your last interactions with the application. Angular has a package called as at the rate Angular slash service worker, which was in a different repository until Angular 5, where the Angular team put it to the main repository. Now, in case you are not familiar with the service workers, you can think of them as small proxies in your browser. Once you activate them, it lets you to cache a static asset, and therefore, you don't need to fetch those data on every load. Next in our list is Build Optimization Update. The Build Optimizer is a tool which is included in your Angular CLI that makes your bundle smaller using the semantic understanding of your Angular application. Basically, what it does is it keeps those parts of your application which are needed and marks those as pure. This improves the tree checking process that let you remove the additional or extra part of the application from the build. The second thing the build optimizer does is to remove the Angular decorator from your application's runtime code. Decorators are used by compiler and aren't required at the runtime. Therefore, it is a good move to remove them from your runtime code. Finally, all of these things let you decrease the size of your JavaScript bundles and therefore it lets you to boot up your application faster. Now let us talk about TypeScript guys. Angular 5 supports the new TypeScript version 2.4. Because of this now you can take advantage of all the new TypeScript features in your Angular code base. The two main features that comes along with the TypeScript 2.4 are string based enums and weak type detection. Let's understand what are these. Basically TypeScript 2.4 now allows enum members to contain string initializers. For example, I have an enum colors and I have a three member called as red, green and blue which has been initialized by the string value as you can see. Now let's talk about the feature called as weak type detection. Before that, let's understand what is a weak type. Any type that contains nothing but a set of all optional properties is considered to be weak. For example, I'm having an interface over here that have all the optional properties, color, font, and size. So with TypeScript 2.4, you can't assign an object to a weak type when there is no overlap in the properties of the two. That is, I'm having a function called as send message, which accepts an argument of type options with respect to these properties. And then I have an object called as ops having two properties as background and font size. So it will throw me an error when I go ahead and call that send message function passing this object because there is no overlap between the properties of the two. So this was all about TypeScript guys. Let's go ahead and understand the significant improvement that has happened in terms of compiler. Now Angular works in two ways when it comes to compiling your TypeScript or Angular code. That is just-in-time compilation and ahead-of-time compilation. In just-in-time compilation, the templates are compiled in the browser at runtime, whereas in case of ahead-of-time compilation, the templates are compiled at build time. Now, if you think about ahead-of-time compilation, it has lots of advantage because it lets your browser to download the pre-compiled version of your application. Therefore, the browser can render the application immediately without waiting the compilation of the application to be finished. But the problem was this compiler was a bit slow before Angular 5 and as a result, most of us were going ahead with just-in-time mode compilation in development. We only used ahead-of-time compiler when we have to push the codes to the production. Now the reason behind this slow compilation was that for every template change, it triggered a full compilation of the application. Now in Angular 5, things have been improved. In fact, the compiler has been transformed using this TypeScript transform feature that was introduced in TypeScript 2.3. So let us understand what is the change that has happened in the compiler with respect to the previous version and the current version. So earlier what was happening was that your Angular compiler was a separate program which prepared your script to be compiled by the TypeScript. 
So basically, your Angular compiler was working as a transformer that transforms your code so as to make it ready for your TypeScript compiler to go ahead and compile it. Now what is happening is your Angular compiler is a plugin to the TypeScript compiler. This means that a separate build step that was happening earlier for the Angular compiler is no longer needed. So if you go ahead with the incremental rebuilds, uh, what happens now is your Angular compiler is now able to compile only those parts that is necessary. The, hence you get the significant reduction of the build time. In fact, I would suggest you guys to check out this on your own using the flag hyphen hyphen AOT in your ng-serp command. It has not been turned on by default in your ng-serp command, but whenever you go ahead with the ng-build command, it will be compiled using AOT only. According to an official statement from the Angular team, when they were performing an incremental AOT build of angular.io website, that is the official website, the new compiler pipeline saved 90% of their build time. So that is, the build time from 40 seconds went down to two seconds on their development machines. So that is the huge improvement, guys. But there are still some problems with large number of components if you go ahead with AOT. So they are working on that, and I guess in future releases, AOT will be turned on by default, and we can go ahead and make use of it. Now let's talk about white spaces, guys. Now earlier, all the tabs, new lines, and spaces in the templates were recreated for you and then included in the build by the compiler. But things have changed in Angular 5. You can now choose whether to preserve white spaces or not. Again, this will help you to reduce the build size of your bundles. For choosing whether to preserve white spaces or not, there are two ways. Either you can go ahead and specify that in your component decorator using the preserve white spaces property, or you can go ahead with an application-wide specification in your TypeScript configuration, that is the file tsconfig.app.json file, and there also you can specify whether to preserve white spaces or not. But remember, in general, the component-level specifications override application-wide specification. Right now, this property has been set to true by default, but in future, the team might set the very preserve white space feature to false by default. Now, there has been some changes in router as well. Some additional events are added to the router lifecycle. These events are activation start and activation end, or child activation start and child activation end. So this makes it easier for a developer to track the router lifecycle. And for example, what one can do is one can display a spinner while some children components are being loaded, as shown in the code over here. Also, with the new router, it's now possible to reload a page when the router receives a request to navigate to the same URL. Earlier, a lot of people were complaining about this feature, and it was quite impossible to build a refresh button, which we can do with Angular 5. Now, there is some news with the HTTP module as well, guys. The old at the rate Angular HTTP module is now officially deprecated with the new HTTP client module. This HTTP client module was shipped in version 4.3 in the Angular slash common package. Now for using the new HTTP client, you will need to import HTTP client module from your at the rate angular slash common slash HTTP package. Now in case you are trying to replace HTTP model with the newer HTTP client module in your current code base, you need to remove the map res, res.json calls because JSON has been assumed as a default in Angular 5 and therefore it is not necessary to parse it explicitly. Angular 5 now supports RxJS 5.5.2 or later versions. This has changed the way we used to import RxJS operators. Earlier, we have to write separate import statements for each operator. Now we can go ahead and use the ES6 structuring and import the operators as shown in the example over here. For example, I can go ahead with import map filter from RxJS slash operator. This has improved the tree checking process again, so as to reduce your bundle size, basically to remove all those codes that is not necessary in your runtime code. Angular team has introduced the new number, date, and currency pipes that increase standardization across browser. Earlier, what was happening, one needs to rely on the browser to provide number, date, and currency formatting using I18 polyfills or I18 APIs. So because of the inconsistencies between different browser, it led to different bugs. All of these has been fixed now in Angular 5 with the new pipes which do not rely on I18 polyfills anymore. Now, if you don't do anything, when you upgrade to Angular 5, you will use the new pipes by default. In case you want to go ahead with the previous implementation, you can do that by importing the deprecated I18 pipes module, which is there in at the rate Angular slash common package. Well, there has been some changes in form as well. Basically, what was happening earlier was that 
validation was performed for every value changes in your form control. This significantly impacts performances in those cases where you have complex validations. Now you have the power to specify when validation should happen using the update on option. Now in case of reactive forms, you can go ahead and specify the update on property in your form control or you can go ahead with the form group as well so as to specify a group wide specification. Now there are three states on which the validation can happen. The one is called as blur, the other one is change or submit. In case of blur, the validation will happen when the user has left the input field and have clicked on somewhere else. In case of change which is turned on by default, it activates validation on every change. In case if you want the validation to happen once the user click on submit button or tries to submit the form, you can go ahead with the submit option as well. Similarly, in case of template driven forms, you can go ahead and use the directive ng form options. So there also you have got this update on property. Again, you can set it to submit in case you want the validation to happen when a person submits a form or you can go ahead with blur as well. You can either go ahead with the control wide specification or you can go ahead with the form wide specification as shown in the example over here. So it's up to you guys. Now there's one more thing that I forgot to tell that additionally now you can specify the async validators directly in the option object instead of specifying it as a third parameter. So as you can see in the example here in the options object what I've done I have used update on and I can go ahead with async validators over here as you can see. Now there has been some other changes as well. For example, they have introduced export as using which you can export component and directive with different different names or alias. Also zones have been made faster by default. Zones are nothing but execution context. So that allows change detection for your Angular application. Now it is possible to bypass the zones for better performance in case you don't want those change detection to happen so as to increase the performance. For that what you can do is you can bootstrap your application with the option called as ng zone and you can set it to noob so as to bypass the zones. So guys finally we have understood what are the changes that has happened in Angular 5. Angular team is quite agile and they are going ahead with the new releases in every six months. Now a lot of things are being changed. In case now you're wondering how to upgrade your application to Angular 5, they have built a Angular update guide which you can check out that is HTTPS Angular Update Guide Firebase.com. So let's go ahead and check out this website. So what you have to do over here, you have to specify what is your current code base, the version that you're using. For example, if I'm using 4.3 and I want to upgrade to 5.0, now you have to click on show me how to update and it will list you all those changes that has happened that you have to do in your current code base. So that is very useful guys. So you can go ahead and have a look at this as well. Finally guys, I hope that you had a good time over here. You understood what are the changes that have happened in Angular 5. So see you in the next video guys. Till then have fun. Bye. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.